Okay, Bob, let's play a game. All I right. will think about a number, and if you guess my number, I'm going to give you 100 bucks. Okay. To keep things simple, I will also think about a number between 1 and 10. All right. right. All right, let's play. Okay, I, I thought about a number. Are you sure? You're set? I'm all set. Okay, let me guess. Alice, I think your number is an eight. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bob, my number was a nine. Okay, give me one more chance. Let's play this once more. Okay. Okay, I thought about a new number. You're set? I'm all set. Okay, Alice, I think your number was a uh, six. No, sorry, Bob, my number was a seven. Lost again. Wait, Alice, I know you. You're setting me up. <laughs> You're changing your mind. No, 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 no. This doesn't work. I need you to find a way to convince me that once you're committed to your number, you're not changing your mind anymore. Otherwise, it's cheating. OK, OK. OK, I have a suggestion. I All will right. write my number on a piece of paper and put it inside this envelope. And once it's inside, you're not changing again. I will try, but yes. OK. OK. So choose a number, put it in the envelope. I'm not looking. OK. Tell me when you're ready. All right, I'm ready. So Alice, um, can I make my guess? Yeah, sorry, I was just distracted for a moment. No okay. problem. Yeah. So I guess? think Alice's number is a five. I won? Did you look inside my envelope? No, I didn't look. I got the number right. You owe me $100. OK, OK. So I also want some security conditions in this game. All right. Okay. What's your condition? So I want to be sure that even though I put my number inside the envelope, Bob cannot look at my number. OK. OK. OK, I promise I won't look. Okay. So let's play this one more time, but now fairly. I'm not okay. looking. Okay. Right, I'll think about a number. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. I think Alice's number is six. Sorry, Bob. My number is a seven. Is that true? Let me check. She didn't lie. I lost again. <laughs> Alice, you win. Sorry, Bob. So let's go over what a bit commitment scheme is. It's just like a perfectly secure version of the commitment envelope. So in general, a commitment scheme will have two phases. So the first phase in the, is the commit phase. In the commit phase, Alice thinks of a number, any number. In general, this will be a single bit. We'll use the letter R to denote Alice's bit. And Alice puts her bit inside the envelope. So that's the commit phase. Then the second phase is called the open phase. In the open phase, Bob is given access to the envelope. Bob can open the envelope and recover the secret bit R that Alice put inside the envelope. And so as usual, there's a correctness condition, which is that if both Alice and Bob execute the bit commitment protocol correctly, then it should be the case that the bit Bob recovers when he opens the envelope, R, is exactly the bit r that Alice placed inside the envelope. So that's if the users follow uh, the honest behavior. But what if one of them is dishonest? 
So now let's go over the security conditions. Let's start with Bob. So this condition is called the binding condition. So informally, what we want is that once Alice has committed to a bit, she can't change her mind anymore. More formally, we can express this as the condition that the probability that Alice can convince Bob that she committed to a 0, plus the probability that Alice can convince Bob that she committed to a 1, should be at most 1. Or in the setting of epsilon security, maybe this should be at most 1 plus epsilon. So for example, if the probability that Alice is able to convince Bob that she committed to a 0 is 1, then the probability that she committed to a 1 should be 0, or should be at most epsilon, which is going to be a negligible function. So that's called the epsilon binding condition. So there's also a security condition for Alice. So Alice wants the commitment to be hiding. This means that she wants that Bob is ignorant about her bit or number r. More formally, we thus have the joint state of the bit r and Bob's system b is close to being uniform on r and uncorrelated from Bob. So this is a commitment scheme. It satisfies these two conditions. It is binding. Alice cannot change her mind, and it is hiding. Bob cannot learn the bit ahead of time. 